And lastly today, we're just going to recap how to find the half-life of a material in the lab. And this is exactly the same as it was for GCSE. So your detector is the Geiger Muller tube, named after Geiger and Muller from a previous video. And when alpha, beta, gamma or positrons enter here, then they cause a signal to be sent to the counter and the counter counts it. And it doesn't matter what kind of ionising particle hits there, they all just get counted the same. What I'm sure you know from seeing this in school is that without your radio sources anywhere near, your Geiger counter is going to be clicking away. And that's because background radiation is passing through us and passing into the Geiger Muller tube all the time. So there's a, a low level of ionising radiation passing through us all the time. I'm sure you know that this comes from um, cosmic rays, from some types of rocks, from your food, um, from medical procedures, these sorts of things. And um, then it's not it's not particularly damaging to us. Um, if you live in Cornwall, it's a little bit more of a concern, but um, it's not it's not something that we need to worry about. But it does have implications for this practical. So what you need to do before you get any of the sources out is you have to count the background radiation. And normally you do sort of a minute. So you you just let it sit there for a minute and then you write down what the count was, then you zero it and you let it sit there for another minute, write it down and you do this several times. Now you will see that the numbers are really different every time, there's huge variation. So it's at least five but ten is better, you know, as many repeats as you can stand to do and then average it and that's going to be your value for the background radiation. Now why is it so varied? Because it's random, because radioactive um, decay is random, um, so lots of several times and then average. And another important thing is that wherever you are going to do your experiment, when you bring the sources out, wherever it is that you're going to put them to do this experiment, that's where the Geiger Muller tube needs to be when you're getting your value for the background radiation. Because if you move it somewhere else, the background radiation might be slightly different there. So you've got to have it in the same place. And these are the things you're getting marks for when you describe this practical in the exam. OK, so once you've got your value for the background radiation, in a minute, you bring out your source and put it in line with the tube. And then you're going to measure the count every minute for about 20 minutes, say. You then subtract the background count from your count. Um, and that gives you the, the just the count from the source. Then you're going to plot that on a graph and you're going to use your graph to find the half-life. The other very important things to say for this practical are, of course, the safety points. So you do not touch a radioactive source with your hands. You use tongs to move it around. You never point it towards anybody. And you should store them in lead-lined boxes. Um, children need to be over the age of 16 before they are allowed to use the radioactive sources younger than that and they must be I think it's two meters away